There's no doubt that All Day I Dream has one of the most solid, organic house drum grooves. Artists like Lee Burridge, Tim Green, Valen Sentier, they really get it right. Take a listen for yourself. Let's dive in. So for the BPM, we're going to stick with 121. I find that 121, 123 usually works best with this type of style. We're going to start off with the kick. Kick is one that you can find from the Daydreamer pack called Milaiki. It's one of my favorite kicks. You see there's a bit of a transient with this kick, a slight dip, and then a gradual fade down. These are usually the kicks I choose because I feel like they cut through the mix best. But if I'm honest, it's less about the kick that you choose and more about the groove that you create around the kick. For this specific kick, I took out the frequencies at around 160 hertz because I felt like those were a bit thumpy. It gives the bass and the rest of the groove a bit more space, but this is something that you'll need to test out. Just take out this frequency range and see if the kick works better with the mix or not. After that, I added a bit of saturation, as you can see here, at about 5 to 60 B of drive on analog clip. You can change the bass frequency around here, but I wanted it to emphasize the lows, so I put it to minus 36 here. I really want to make sure that the saturation doesn't boost the overall loudness of the kick, so I decreased the volume by 9 dB afterwards, the output gain. And you can see I've added a shifter in Ableton Live 10. This is called a frequency shifter. This is great for tuning down your kicks. It's not something that you necessarily need all the time, but it's great if you want to fine tune the kick and make it a bit more lower without losing the quality of the kick. Then I added a utility to make sure that the bass is in mono. It's not on the side, so it doesn't mess with our mix. I also added a fab filter dynamic EQ to increase some of those frequencies at around 200 hertz to increase that oomph if that makes any sense. And to equalize for this little boost, I added a dip at around 975 hertz to reduce the clickiness of the kick. So this gives it an overall feeling of it being more low end. So let me play the kick with the processing for you. And without the processing, it sounds like this. So all this is doing is basically creating a kick that sounds a bit more lower just to get that extra little low end out of that kick. Right underneath the kick, you can see this tom layer. This is basically a duplicate of the kick that adds groove to the kick rhythm. There's also a really intense high cut at about 100 hertz. Bit of a little boost here to emphasize those lows. And with the kick, it sounds like this. Next, we have the hi-hat that sounds like this. It's a really simple eighth hi-hat, didn't do a lot. I just made sure that I used the shaker sample for this hat. So one that has a bit of a slope at the beginning here, because this tends to sound a bit more softer than a direct hi-hat. Hi-hats usually tend to sound very techy, and for the style of organic house, especially all day I dream, it's best to use hi-hats like this. So you can see I added a bit of attack here to make this sound even a bit more slopey during the beginning. So to give it some time to fade in. And then I reduced the decay and sustain to make it a bit more short. And without the processing, it would have sounded like this. And with the envelope processing, it sounds like this. Now let's get to the clap. The clap consists of two layers. And for this, I used MIDI. First layer is more of an organic loose clap that sounds like this on its own. And the second layer is a really tight rim clap that sounds like this on its own. And I like to combine these two layers to create that really organic and loose all the I dream vibey clap. And you can see for the first clap that I pre-shifted this by 12 milliseconds. So you can actually blend this in here. It's this little delay panel. And this adds a bit more to that looseness. And the second clap, I made sure it's tightly on grid. So every second fourth note, every second kick, the clap is being played. So with the hats and the kicks, it sounds like this. Here's just the loose layer. Here's just the tight layer. Combined. Cool. For the processing of the claps, I removed some of the low end. You can see there's a bit of compression going on as well, about 5 dB of gain reduction, just to make sure the claps are glued together, as the name already implies here. And this really helps to tighten out that clap, because claps are usually a very loud and intrusive signal, and with this glue compression, we can glue it in the mix. I find 5 to 10 dB to be the ideal range for claps. 
So you just reduce your threshold to your liking and increase the makeup gain as well. I also added a bit of saturation here, about 11.4 dB, and reduced the output accordingly. It's not doing a lot, but it's certainly emphasizing a few harmonics, and it's making it feel a bit more alive. And if you do this to your individual layers, let's say you have a saturator on your bass, on your kick, then it adds up in the end of the mix. And you can also see on this claps group, I have a convolution reverb. I use this specific preset. This is the ambience in small rooms preset here. The input response is the ABLCR. So this is a really short little decay that adds a bit more room to the claps. So I would consider this to be my core drums group, and that's why we're going to name it core drums. After that, I'd like to add some type of ambient noise that you can hear in the background. This is from the Daydreamer pack. It's called Vinyl Crackle. Sounds like this on its own in the mix. We want to make sure we tune it down to minus infinity and just slowly start mixing it in. I love the way these little ambient sounds just really glue your entire drum groove together. They make it feel so retro and old school, I love it. After I have my core drums groove ready, I'd like to add in some shakers. And if you wanna watch a more in-depth video on how to create organic house shakers, you can click on this card above here. In this case, I'm gonna go through a few of my loops from Daydreamer, shaker loops. So this one sounds kinda cool. And I also like this top loop from Daydreamer as well. And same thing, we can also glue these together. Just about 5 dB compression. And we can also add some saturation. So compression and saturation is really what I love to do with drums. Awesome. This is where it gets fun. Now what we're going to do is create these bongos that you can hear a lot in All Day I Dream style from scratch. So I'm going to create a new MIDI track and automatically group those into, let's say, percussion. Oops. Percussion. <laughs> <laughs> there are these really awesome percussion sounds called Dipinga from Pulpo Audio, and I'm going to link those down in the description below. I'm going to use Dipinga Conga first, add it to this audio layer. By the way, these are completely free. I'm going to create a MIDI clip, reduce the volume, and start drawing in notes in accordance to the groove. If you hit Alt and hover over your notes, you can reduce the velocity, and this actually changes the tonality of the congas or the percussion. And you can draw in these 16th notes. Let's play this with our groove now. And just start picking your favorite little sections here. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to add an auto pan to these guys to make them move around a bit more in the stereo spectrum. Set the rate to notes. Change the shape to a rectangular one. And let's change the rate to, let's say, 3 16ths. Gonna copy this section, let's say, and put it right here. Cool. Then I'm gonna take this section, paste it over here. Take this little section and paste it over here. So we have our first little conga loop ready. So as a matter of fact, I'm gonna take the low cut compressor and saturator from this little loops group and put it on the percussion group as well. From the claps, I'm gonna take this convolution reverb and put it on the percussion group too. So we have the same style of reverb. I feel like the auto pan's a bit too much, so I'm gonna reduce that here. Low cut. Bass mono. And now what I'm gonna do is create a new MIDI track like this, and I'm gonna use the same plugin, Dipinga, but this time we're gonna use Bongo. This is also a free plugin, so check that out using the links below. Give this a different color, so make this kind of like a bluish color so we can differentiate both of these layers. And now I'm gonna highlight this section, Control shift m to create a new MIDI clip. And now I'm gonna draw in some Bongo notes. So whenever the conga isn't playing, I'm gonna have a few Bongo notes to fill in the void in between. 
reduce the velocities. There we go. There we go. Duplicate this section, perhaps take it over here. Add a few different notes. Awesome. Then I'm going to duplicate this section over here. Do the same. Add some auto pan. Put it right here. Awesome. So this is the groove. And to finish it off as a little bonus, we can also create some ambient texture. So I'm going to create a new audio track for this. And I'm actually going to also move into Daydreamer because there's these really nice little vocal sounds that you can hear in this vocal fill folder. Yeah, I love these. I'm going to add the first one here, reduce the volume, and you can use any delay plugin. But in my case, I'm going to use Echo Boy Jr. because I really love this plugin. I'm going to add that here it to eight dot mode, increase the feedback, reduce the volume on the vocal, and then let's play this. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, feel free to hit that like and subscribe button and grab these sounds using the links down below. See you on the next one. Cheers. Thank you.